depression in freezing point uh, in the last class uh, we discussed this what is freezing point the temperature at which vapor pressure of a liquid becomes equal to vapor pressure of the corresponding solid okay actually uh, here at the freezing point there exists an equilibrium see uh, here we have solid here we have liquid so there is an equilibrium exists right at the freezing point what equilibrium equilibrium is between uh, liquid solution liquid solution and uh, solid solvent students observe carefully solid solvent solid solvent these two are in equilibrium very very important at the freezing point liquid solution and solid solvent are in equilibrium what's the meaning the meaning is this see when you uh, when you freeze suppose if you if you take a, if you take pure solvent students so observe this can if you take pure solvent suppose i have pure solvent right and if you cool it If you cool the solution, or if you cool the solvent, what will happen at one stage? You will get a solid, right? If the vapor pressure of the liquid and the vapor pressure of the solid becomes equal, we call that point as the freezing point. Okay, so you have solid here and solid as vapor, right? If the vapor pressure of the liquid and vapor pressure of the solid become equal we call that temperature as freezing point so freezing point is the temperature at which vapor pressure of liquid becomes equal to vapor pressure of uh, the corresponding solid so here we have taken pure solvent so pure solvent will uh, become solid so you get the solid vapor pressure and liquid vapor pressure these two become equal if you take pure solvent there is no problem but if you take solution observe this carefully students if you take solution now i have solution containing so this is solution solution which contain containing non volatile solvent non volatile solvent. remember whenever solution containing non volatile solute if you cool the solution right what will happen uh, only the solvent molecule will, will will become solid okay if you cool a non volatile solute or uh, solution containing non volatile solute only the solvent molecule becomes solid okay student turn on your camera everyone turn on your camera so here what will happen you will get right here you will get a uh, solid portion and liquid portion okay let me just draw like this just for sake yes. okay you will get the solid portion and liquid portion right this liquid portion consists of a uh, solution where sodium chloride and water both are present suppose if you take uh, Uh, the non volatile solute is sodium chloride okay for example if i take sodium chloride then that sodium chloride dissolve in solution uh, water so sodium chloride water solution will exist here and just for understanding purpose i'm drawing it and the solid part consists of only water so what does it indicate if you cool a solution containing non volatile solute only the solvent molecule freeze and become solid right and here there exists an equilibrium between the uh, liquid solution liquid solution and the solid water okay so that's why i told you in the case of uh, solution in the case of solution at the freezing point liquid solution and the solid solvent are in equilibrium okay so the point that you should remember here is when you uh, 
at the freezing point at the freezing point right uh, when the solution containing non volatile solute right only the solvent will freeze up not the solute part okay keep that in mind very very important okay then <coughs> we discussed uh, I, i took a water molecule water as solvent and uh, this is the phase diagram of water so this is this uh, curve indicate uh, the phase diagram of pure water if you add a non volatile solute you will get a, a vapor pressure lower than this curve so here this dotted line indicate uh, the uh, phase diagram for uh, solution containing non volatile solute right so here the solvent is water molecule right now suppose if the external pressure is one atmosphere then you draw a straight line from here and the straight line which touches this uh, pure solvent curve pure solvent curve that gives you the freezing point of your solvent t not and the and this straight line it cuts the solution curve at this point and draw a straight line to the x axis that temperature gives you freezing point of solution and it was observed that right freezing point of pure solvent from this diagram is very clear freezing point of pure solvent is greater than freezing point of solution okay so remember this freezing point of pure solvent is greater than freezing point of solution but in elevation of boiling point i have told you boiling point of solution is greater than boiling point of pure solvent here it is just ulta okay freezing point of pure solvent is greater than Freezing point of solution. Okay, now, so uh, we can write uh, the delta T F. So what is delta T F? Delta T F is nothing but freezing point of pure solvent. Minus freezing point of solution. Last class we did everything, and this delta T F depends on molality of the solution. As molality increases, the gap also will increase. What I am trying to say: this gap, and here uh, we have gap, right? Between uh, T naught and T. This gap is nothing but delta T F. I have told you, this gap depends on, or the difference. This difference. depends on the molality of the solution as the molality increases the gap also increases okay so that's what i have given here delta tf is directly proportional to molality of the solution if we equate this we should introduce a constant which is kf into m right this expression is sufficient for non electrolyte if your solute is non electrolyte this is sufficient but whenever you use Uh, electrolyte as solute okay the electrolyte may undergo uh, association or dissociation in solution therefore we need to uh, consider the association and dissociation factor so i am introducing a new uh, term here called i or i is called van t hoff factor okay i have already told you here i this i is called van t hoff factor van t hoff factor and uh, van t hoff factor i equal to 1 for non electrolytes for non electrolyte okay i is greater than 1 if dissociation occurs if electrolyte undergo dissociation i equal to less than 1 if electrolyte undergo association right so let's keep all these things in mind very very important right so these things we discussed in the last class then i have also told you uh, what is kf here kf is called cryoscopic constant okay also called molar freezing point depression constant what is the meaning the meaning is if you want to know uh, the kf if you want to know what is what is the meaning for the proportionality constant you should keep all other terms Okay, as one. So if I keep molality as one, right? Then whatever 
uh, depression increasing point that occurs is what we call as KM. Okay, see, I'm going to say if M equal to 1, if molality equal to 1, then delta Tf become equal to KF. Therefore, I can define KF as KF is defined as that is cryoscopic constant. Cryoscopic constant is defined as the depression increasing point of one molar solution. Depression increasing point of one molar solution is what we call as uh, KF. Okay. And uh, this KF can be determined through, you can also calculate using uh, uh, using this data, R is gas constant, T naught F is the freezing point of pure solvent square into molar mass of solvent divided by 1000 into enthalpy of fusion. Okay, using this data, you can calculate the value of KF. Right? You can also determine KF by taking one molar solution. This is the experimental method. You can also calculate using this formula. Right? This is actually a derived formula. I have told you derivation is not required for your level, so we need not worry about that. And uh, uh, delta Tf equal to I into K into F, Kf into M, you know. Suppose, uh, so we can write delta Tf is directly proportional to I, right? And delta Tf is nothing but increasing uh, point of pure solvent minus increasing point of solution, right? So the difference, listen here, this is constant. This is constant. If this is low, if uh, freezing point of solution is low, then this difference will be high. Okay. So if I increases, I is Venta factor. If I increases, the difference will increase. Difference increases means freezing point of solution should decrease. So this I have given in the last class. So as uh, freezing point of solution decreases, delta Tf increases. That we know. So as I increases, delta Tf increases. If delta Tf increases, freezing point of solution should decrease. So in order to understand this in an easier way, keep this in, in your mind. Freezing point of solution is inversely proportional to I. We don't have direct relation like this, but this is, I'm giving you for understanding purpose. If Vanta factor is high, freezing point of solution will be so that's why I have given uh, an example here. If you take uh, uh, aqueous solutions of 0.1 molar urea, 0.1 molar molar molal, 0.1 molar potassium chloride, 0.1 molar sodium sulfate, 0.1 molar aluminum sulfate, which one has highest freezing point or lowest freezing point, right? You have to do you have, uh, how to do that. You find out the Venta factor. Urea is non-electrolyte, so I equal to one. Potassium chloride is electrolyte, which undergo dissociation. So you'll get two particles, so I equal to two. Here you'll get three particles, three ions, I equal to three. Here you can, you'll get five, therefore I equal to five. So as I increases, as per this relation, as I increases, freezing point will decrease. So among the four solutions, the last one has the lowest freezing point. Okay, yeah. So um, this is very, very important one, keep this in mind. Okay, so with this, we have completed uh, the depression increasing point. Now, we will discuss the next important colligative property called osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is usually denoted by the symbol pi. We use the symbol pi for osmotic pressure. Okay. Uh, before going to see osmotic pressure, let me tell you what is osmosis first of all. What is meant by osmosis? Okay. Students, this is very, very simple. Suppose uh, I'll take uh, a container. Just for understanding purpose, I'm going like this. I'll take a container. I separate this container. I'll take a container. And I'll separate this container with a semi-permeable membrane. Right? I have separated the container using 
semi semi permeable semi permeable membrane okay semi permeable membrane you take a container separate the container using a semi permeable membrane you know very well semi permeable membrane let me uh, say simply spm spm semi permeable membrane allows allows only solvent molecules allows only solvent molecules molecules pass through it pass through it will allow only solvent molecules pass through right only solvent molecules can pass through the semi permeable membrane not the solid particles okay that's the uh, role of uh, semi permeable membrane now what i'm going to do i'll take uh, two same solution okay i'll take two same solution so i have a solution here i have another solution here both are same solution say this is sodium chloride solution aqueous sodium chloride this is also aqueous sodium chloride like that i i'll take two so same solution but the concentrations are different let us say this solution has concentration c2 and this solution has concentration c1 i have uh, uh, i have taken two same solutions wouldn't keep this in mind two same solution but having different concentration assume that here c2 concentration is greater than c1 if okay concentration of this solution is higher then concentration of this solution students observe this carefully when you separate two solutions of different concentration by a semi permeable membrane then solvent molecules solvent molecules diffuse solvent molecules diffuse from lower concentration side to higher concentration side okay solvent molecules so which molecule is moving here solvent molecules solvent molecules are actually diffusing here right diffusing to the other side so this is so the uh, molecules that is coming here are solvent molecules this is what we call as osmosis right or or you can say in the other way also you can you can take this example also see i'll take a, a container i'll separate the container using a semi permeable membrane i'll, I'll separate the container using semi permeable membrane now i'll take a solution here some solution some solution and i'll take pure solvent here pure solvent okay this solution is made up of this solvent okay i have a solution containing same solvent so here i have solution containing some non volatile solute non volatile solute okay here this solution contains non volatile solute and here i have solution which is a pure solvent now if you separate these by using a semi permeable membrane this is semi permeable membrane spm what will happen solvent molecules from the pure solvent side solvent molecules will diffuse right or or pass through pass through the membrane and the enters to the higher the sol solution side this process is what we call as osmosis okay so you can say osmosis by using this way or by using this way both are both are actually same right so what is osmosis osmosis is nothing but uh, when when two solutions when two solutions two same solutions of different concentrations are separated by a semi permeable membrane then solvent molecule will will pass through or diffuse right solvent molecule will pass through the membrane from lower concentration side to higher concentration side this process is what we call as osmosis okay let me write this is statement so let me get that so what is osmosis 
last losses. When? When two same solutions. When two same solutions of different concentration. When two same solutions of different concentrations. Okay, when two same solutions of different concentrations are separated. Are separated by a semi-permeable membrane. When two so same solutions of different concentrations are separated by a semi-permeable membrane, then membrane then then solvent molecules then solvent molecules solvent molecules pass through the semi-permeable membrane pass through the semi-permeable membrane. Okay, solvent molecules pass through the semi-permeable membrane from lower concentration side from lower concentration side to higher concentration side. Higher concentration side. Okay, when two same solutions of different concentrations are separated by a semi-permeable membrane, then solvent molecules pass through the semi-permeable membrane from lower concentration side to higher concentration side. This process is what we call as osmosis. This process is called is called as osmosis. This is what we call as osmosis. Right? Then, then what is meant by osmotic pressure? Now, let me introduce the term osmotic pressure. What is meant by osmotic pressure? Students observe this carefully. Now, what I am going to do, I will take a, a, a cylinder like apparatus. Okay? A cylinder like apparatus. This. I will close this side and this side. Right? With a cork. Right? And I will insert a tube here. A tube here. Glass tube. And I will send a glass tube to the person. And send glass tube to the person. And I will separate uh, this uh, container. I will separate this container into, into two compartments using a semi permeable membrane. So this is a semi permeable membrane. Students observe this carefully. I have separated uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this tube, okay, it's a glass tube, bigger glass tube. I have separated this into two compartments. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take uh, solutions. You can take same solutions at different concentration or else you can take pure solvent in one side and solution in the other side, okay. So suppose I'll take solution here, I'll take Solution containing non volatile solute. And the, in the other side, I'll take pure sun. I'll take pure sun. So, uh, because of the solution, so you have some levels are occupied here. Similarly, here also, some level is occupied by pure sun. Right? Now, listen, students, diffusion will occur, or uh, I'm sorry, osmosis will occur. Osmosis occurs from, so here I have pure solvent. Osmosis occurs from pure solvent side or uh, osmosis will occur in which solvent molecules from pure solvent will diffuse, will diffuse through the semi-permeable membrane, okay, or will pass through the semi-permeable membrane and enters into the solution side. 
if if a more solvent molecule enters here what will happen here the height of this column will increase okay suppose assume that this column height increases and reaches this point this level and this height let me take it as h h is the height uh is the height that is uh, increased in the solution side due to osmosis now now what is what is osmotic pressure see osmotic pressure is nothing but you can say this it, it is a, it is a hydrostatic pressure or the uh, uh, pressure that is developed due to osmosis okay so here osmotic pressure is nothing but rho into g into the height in which this level is increased rho is the density of the solution g is gravity constant and h is the height that is increased now instead of showing this way you can also show in the other way okay let me write the next page and let's observe carefully always if we separate a solution containing non volatile solute and the pure solvent using a semi permeable membrane if you separate them a solvent molecule diffuses from pure solvent side to the solution side this is what we call as osmosis because of the osmosis okay here the height of the column will increase the increase in height okay let it be h if you know this h you can calculate the osmotic pressure right you can explain this osmotic pressure in the other way how how let me take a similar type of apparatus i have separated uh, this side we have uh, both the sides are closed with a cork right and here i have a tube and here also we have a tube now what i am going to do Uh, in this tube here i have tube and uh, this uh, apparatus is separated by a semi permeable membrane is separated by a semi permeable let's say semi permeable membrane and i'll take uh, i'll take solution here here i have solution i have solution containing non volatile solute and this side i'll take pure solvent here i have pure solvent we know very well we know very well uh, let the temperature of the uh, experiment is t okay now now what will happen uh, you know uh, the solvent molecule will diffuse from pure solvent side to the solution side because of that the level will increase okay now what i'm going to do see here uh, uh, we have the solution level initially here we have the solvent level this are initial required. okay now what i am going to do i'll keep a piston here students observe carefully i'll keep a piston here piston now using the piston i am going to apply some pressure using the piston i am going to apply some pressure listen such that you should apply the pressure such that it should just stop the osmosis okay you should not allow solvent molecule to pass through okay if you apply pressure here solvent molecule never enter here so the the minimum pressure which is required to stop osmosis is what we call as osmotic pressure okay you can define osmotic pressure in the other way so what is osmotic pressure so osmotic pressure osmotic pressure phi is the minimum pressure is the minimum pressure is the minimum pressure or minimum excess pressure is the minimum pressure applied on the solution side on the solution side okay on the solution side or higher concentration side you can say in the other way also or 
earth concentration side. Okay. Osmotic pressure is the minimum pressure applied on the solution side to just stop, to just prevent, to just prevent the osmosis. To just to stop the osmosis, how much pressure is required? This is what we call as osmotic pressure. Students, is this clear? Any doubt in this? You see a piston, you apply some pressure here. If you apply pressure, then solvent molecule does not enter here. Okay? So, what is the pressure required to stop the osmosis? To just to stop the osmosis. That is what we call as osmotic pressure. Okay? Which is denoted by the symbol pi. And osmotic pressure phi is given by the formula phi is equal to C into R into T. Phi is equal to C into R into T where C is the concentration of the solution, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature. Take the measurements. Derivation is available but I am not going to do that. This is not necessary also. But osmotic pressure is equal to C into R into T. Just remember this. Okay, so what is C here? C is concentration. Let me quickly explain. This is the formula for osmotic pressure. Phi is equal to C into R. We have derivation actually. I am not going to do. Right? I am just giving you the expression. Uh, here, what is Phi? Phi is the osmotic pressure. Phi is osmotic pressure. Okay. And what is C? C is concentration in molarity. Students observe that. C is concentration in molarity. Molarity. Sometimes they will give concentration uh, in uh, other terms. If it is given in other terms, you have to convert. You have to convert into molarity. And what is R here? R is the gas constant. Gas constant. For osmotic pressure, we use gas constant value 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per Kelvin per mole. This is the unit we use. Liter atmosphere per Kelvin per mole. Okay. And T is temperature in Kelvin. Kelvin temperature. It's temperature in Kelvin. This is the formula for osmotic pressure. Right? Students, so what is osmotic pressure? Can anyone tell me? What is osmotic pressure? Minimum pressure on the solution side to prevent osmosis. It is the minimum pressure applied on the solution side okay, to just to stop osmosis. Right? It is what we call as osmotic pressure. Right? This expression is sufficient. That is, uh, phi is equal to C into R into T. This expression is sufficient for non-electrolyte. If your solute is non-electrolyte, if your solute is non-electrolyte, then this is okay. But if the solute is electrolyte, which undergo, which may undergo dissociation or association, then you have to take care of the number of particles. Therefore, we have to include a term I. I into C R T. This will give you the osmotic pressure and this is applicable for all solutions. For all for all solutions. This is applicable for all solutions. Right? All solute means the solute may be non-electrolyte and electrolyte. Okay. You all know that for non-electrolyte I equal to I is equal to 1 for non-electrolyte. Okay. I is greater than 1 if electrolyte undergo dissociation. I is equal to, I is less than 1 if electrolyte undergoes association. Association. Okay. Okay. Right. So, uh, always what I suggest is that always remember this formula. This is very important. 
okay phi phi is equal to i into cr that i is the van't hoff factor that is i i is the van't hoff Now, this osmotic pressure, so one minute, can you uh, uh, this colligative property is very useful in the determination of molecular weight of, uh, of solute, okay? especially uh, in the determination of molecular weight of polymers we use. Okay? Osmotic pressure, this colligative property. Right uh, to determine molecular mass of uh, macromolecules. Right to determine to determine molar mass of to determine molecular weight molecular weight of uh, macromolecules. Macro molecules. Um, macro molecules means large size molecules, proteins, right? large size molecules, as well as polymers. And polymers. If you want to determine the molar mass of polymers, right? Then you can use, uh, you can uh, take, you can measure osmotic pressure. Right, you, you can measure osmotic pressure using that. You can measure, you can find the molar mass of the particles, and it's a very useful technique for macromolecules. Okay, the, the thing you have to keep in mind is you should prefer dilute solution. That's important. Okay, so to de to determine macro to determine the molecular weight of macromolecules or polymers, we use this particular colligative property that is osmotic pressure. Okay. Yeah, how to determine the molecular mass? Yes, it's very simple. Phi is equal to, you know very well, I into CRT, but for, for okay, let me write I into C into R into T. This is the formula. Okay, phi is equal to I into concentration should be in molarity, I have told you. Molarity means number of moles of solute by volume of the solution in liters. Volume of the solution in liters. Is the formula right? And what is number of moles of solute? Number of moles of solute is nothing but mass of solute divided by molar mass of solute. Okay. See in this expression, if you know the weight of solute, right? Weight of solute means what is the uh, weight of polymer that you are adding, right? If you know the weight of solute. If you know the volume of the solution, this is volume of solution. Volume of solution. If you know the volume of solution in liter, okay, gas constant, temperature, everything you know. If you substitute all these values and measure and measure osmotic pressure experimentally, okay, experimentally you measure osmotic pressure. So if you know all these values, yes, you can calculate. The molar mass of the solute. Here, the solute is polymer. Okay, so to measure the molecular weight of polymers, this is a very very useful technique. And remember, uh, uh, remember this formula. Okay. Uh, now we are going to do numerical problems. So in the in, uh, uh, when we discuss numerical problem, I'll tell you how to uh, substitute these values and how to solve. Right. Okay. Take note. This is the formula for osmotic pressure. By, by using this expression, you can determine the molecular mass of the solute. Right here, uh, we we take uh, polymers as solute. Okay, so to determine molecular mass of macromolecules, proteins, polymers, or large size molecules, we use this technique. Okay, osmotic pressure measurement is the ideal way of uh, finding uh, macromolecules. 
one kilometer of magnetic fields. Is this clear, student? Any doubt in this? Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. We will discuss uh, some important uh, features of uh, this osmotic pressure. Yeah. Students observe this guy. Suppose I take uh, uh, two solutions, right? Say I have a solution A, I have a solution B. Okay? I have two solutions. Now, I'll measure the osmotic pressure of A and the osmotic pressure of B at the same temperature. Okay? At the same temperature, measure the osmotic pressure of A and measure the osmotic pressure of solution B. Okay, students observe carefully. Suppose if osmotic pressure of A is greater than osmotic pressure of B, we have measured osmotic pressure of A, B separately, right? Osmotic pressure of A is greater than osmotic pressure of B at the same temperature, right? If solution has higher osmotic pressure, we call the solution as hypertonic solution. Hypertonic. Hypertonic means solution having higher osmo osmotic pressure. Solutions having lower osmotic pressures are called hypotonic solutions. Hypotonic. Hypertonic, hypotonic. What's the meaning? The meaning is this. Higher osmotic pressure solutions are called hypertonic solution. Lower osmotic pressure solutions are called hypotonic solutions. Okay. Suppose if the osmotic pressure of A and the osmotic pressure of B are equal, suppose. If two solutions have same osmotic pressure, we call the solutions as isotonic solutions. Isotonic solutions. Students, keep all these things, terms in mind. What is, iso I what is isotonic solution? Isotonic? So, osmotic pressure of A. If two solutions have same osmotic pressure, if two solutions have same osmotic pressure, we call the solution as, solution as isotonic. If a solution has higher osmotic pressure, it is hypotonic. <laughs> if it is low, it is hypotonic. <coughs> then, Next important topic uh, is okay. So listen. Suppose, suppose such that uh, solution A has higher osmotic pressure than solution B. Okay, A and B are uh, solutions containing non-volatile solution. Containing non-volatile solution. Right? A is a solution. B is another solution. And os osmotic pressure of A is greater than osmotic pressure of B. Students observe this carefully. I have told you osmosis means uh, movement of solvent molecule from lower concentration side to higher concentration side. Correct? When temperature is same, okay, at, at same temperature, at same temperature, students observe carefully. Listen, you know very well, pi is equal to CRT. Pi is equal to CRT. And assume that I have two solutions. Both are same solutions. That's very important. Okay, this is urea, aqueous solution of urea. This also should be aqueous solution of urea. But the concentrations are different. Okay. But the concentrations are different. Therefore, this solution has higher osmotic pressure. So one solution has higher osmotic pressure, the other one is higher, lower osmotic pressure. If temperature is same, listen, if temperature is same, R is constant, temperature is same, therefore the osmotic pressure depends only on concentration. Am I right, student? See, I have taken two solutions A and B. A and B are same solutions, but different concentration. At the same temperature, if temperature is constant, R also is a constant, 
Therefore, osmotic pressure is directly proportional to concentration of work. Correct? So, if osmotic pressure of A higher means concentration of A is higher compared to concentration of B. Is it correct? Is this correct? Because osmotic pressure depends on concentration and temperature only, right? If you keep temperature same, if, it, if the two solutions are, are prepared at same temperature, if the osmotic pressures are measured at same temperature, then osmotic pressure depends only on concentration. So, osmotic pressure of A higher means concentration of A should be higher. Okay. So, now students observe carefully. Suppose if I take A and B, if I separate these two by a semi-permeable membrane, solvent molecule diffuses from which side to which side? Students, now I will take these two solutions. I will take these two solutions and se uh, separate them with a semi permeable membrane SPM. I have solution A, solution B. Now the question is solvent molecule diffuse from which side to which side? Which is higher concentration? See, A or B? A. Yes. And I have told you. Always solvent molecule move from lower concentration side to higher concentration side. Okay, so solvent molecule right from lower concentration here, B is lower concentration. So, so uh, the, the solvent molecule move from B to A here. Why? Because B has lower osmotic pressure. So, what I am trying to say, the point is this solvent molecules diffuse or move. Solvent molecules, molecules move from hypertonic solution, from hypertonic, from hypertonic solution to hypotonic solution. I will write it to hypotonic solution. That's the point. Is this clear, student? Any doubt in this? See, I have taken two solutions A and B. Okay. Uh, let us assume that osmotic pressure of A is greater than B. Since temperature, if you, if you, if you measure the osmotic pressure at same temperature, then osmotic pressure depends only on concentration. So, osmotic pressure of A higher means concentration of A should be higher and concentration of B should be lower. Suppose if I separate A and B, these two solutions by a semi permeable membrane, okay, in which direction solvent molecule will flow? Very simple, solvent molecules move always from high, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, from hypo, right? Yeah, from hypotonic, I'm sorry, from hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution. Is it correct, student? Is it correct? Because lower concentration is hypo, higher concentration is hyper. So, solvent molecule diffuse from lower concentration side to higher concentration side. Which means, solvent molecule will move from hypotonic solution side to hypertonic. Okay, that's why I told you. Is this clear, student? Any doubt in this? No, sir. Now you know what is hypertonic solution, what is hypotonic solution, and what is meant by isotonic solution. Isotonic means same osmotic pressure. Okay. Now, now, and listen, students, observe this carefully. Uh, here to explain the hyper hypo, okay, I have uh, taken uh, same solution, right? It's not necessarily same solution. It can even uh, different solutions also. Right. Then, Next important point. Uh, see, uh, the human blood cell RBC 
cell, uh, the solution inside the cell, right? Suppose the cell, the solution inside the cell, right, has the concentration of uh, 0 0.9 percentage mass by volume. Students observe carefully. Human blood cell in which the solution inside the cell, right, inside the solution has a concentration of 0.9 percent mass by volume. Now what I'm going to do, I'll take uh, uh, three different solutions, right? Sodium chloride solution, I'm going to take three different uh, sodium chloride solutions. Okay. I'm going to take sodium chloride solution. And here uh, in the first solution, that the concentration of sodium chloride is 0.9% mass by volume, okay? Sodium chloride solution. Right? In the second uh, vessel, I am going to take solution uh, whose concentration, sodium chloride concentration is greater than 0.9% mass by volume. And here also I have sodium chloride. I am taking only sodium chloride solution. I am taking only sodium chloride solution. Here it is greater. Here it is less than 0.9% mass by volume. Students observe carefully. I have taken three different solutions, right? One is exactly 0.9. Your video is Is this visible now, students? Yes, sir. Can yeah. you repeat once again? Yeah, sir. okay, yes. See, uh, I have uh, taken a human blood cell. Uh, in human blood cell, the solution inside, okay, has the concentration 0.9% mass by volume. Don't worry about the solution. It, it may be, uh, water may be the solution. Okay, the concentration is 0.9% mass by volume. Now, uh, what I did here, I took three uh, solutions, all are sodium chloride solution, aqua sodium chloride. The first one has concentration exactly 0.9% mass by volume. And second one has concentration greater than 0.9%. And third one has concentration less than 0.9%. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the human cell, even the blood cell in this uh, uh, solution, right? The first solution, I'll put the cell. Similarly, here also I'll put the cell. Here also I'll put the cell. Now, what will happen? Students, here, the solution inside, the solution inside is 0.9%. The solution outside, that is sodium chloride, that is also 0.9%. Okay, if temperature is same, if you make this experiment at the same temperature, Okay, if temperature is same, then you know even osmotic pressure depends only on concentration, correct? Therefore, concentration inside the cell, concentration outside the cell are same now, correct? In the first lesson. Am I right, student? So, yes, so here, is there any osmosis take place here? No, sir. Yeah, here, no osmosis take place. No osmosis. The solution remains same. No osmosis. Okay, nothing will happen in the first lesson. Because concentration inside, concentration of the solution outside, they are same. So solvent molecule never move inside or never move outside. Whereas if I put the cell in a solution having concentration higher, so now the concentration of the solution which is present outside. Okay, outside solution has higher concentration. Okay, let me write like this. This is high and concentration inside, inside the cell is low. Is low. What will happen, student? Diffusion, now a solvent molecule will move from? Very good. Remember, solvent molecules always move from lower concentration side to higher concentration side. 
the cell the cell membrane act as a semi permeable membrane students the cell membrane act as a semi permeable membrane it will allow only solvent molecule to pass through so here in which direction solvent molecule will pass will so solvent molecule move from uh, the outer solution to the to inside or uh, inside the cell to outside since concentration inside the cell is low correct low so solvent molecule will diffuse out or it will move out solvent molecules will come out if solvent molecules come uh, from inside the cell starts to come out what will happen to the size of the cell it will shrink sir yeah yes so here the cell will shrink good the cell will shrink so keep this in mind if whatever cell it may be if the so if the concentration of the solution inside the cell if it is less than the outer concentration then the cell will shrink here see the third one in the third case the concentration outside is less now less than 0.9% okay so outside solution has low concentration right whereas the fluid inside the cell this has high concentration now tell me in which direction solvent molecules come out inside the cell yes outside. solvent molecule always always diffuse from lower concentration side to higher concentration side so now the lower concentration is uh, is the outer solution so the outer solution will pass inside it will go inside so what will happen if the solution goes inside what will happen to the uh, size it's right yeah it will start right yes the cell will swallow and uh, if more and more solvent enters the cell sometimes may burst okay the cell may burst it is all because one is hypertonic the other one is hypotonic so when the cell will shrink when the cell will swallow okay so uh, you can easily understand by using uh, this diagram is this clear students any doubt in this no sir right so uh, with this we have completed a uh, osmotic pressure right uh, and uh, we have also yeah so this is actually the last uh, allegory property we we'll discussed then we have one more thing to discuss called van top factor any doubt in osmotic pressure student no sir van top factor i okay what is van top factor van top factor is a is defined like this actually van top factor is defined as is defined as uh, observed colligative property observed colligative property divided by theoretical colligative theoretical colligative property this is what we call as van top factor theoretical means students theoretical means suppose if we add uh, n moles of some solute n moles of solute for this n mole what should be the what should be the colligative property that is what we call the theoretical colligative property but the solute may undergo sometime it may undergo association sometime it may undergo dissociation therefore number of particles or number of moles of solute inside the solution may be different 
therefore observed colligativity property right it is called experimental right observed means experimental experimental colligativity property may be different compared to the theoretical students observe carefully theoretical means if we add num n moles of solute we expect that only n mole present in the solution only n mole of solute particle present in the solution so we expect some colligative property that is called theoretical colligative property but your solute sometime may undergo association sometime may undergo dissociation because of that the actual number of moles of solute or the actual number of moles of solute particle will be different in solution okay therefore observed colligative property that is experimental colligative property is different from the expected theoretical colligative property okay therefore therefore um, in order to understand right what happens actually whether dissociation occur or association occur right so vantoff so introduced this factor called vantoff Vantoff factor equal to observed colligative property by theoretical colligative property. Okay. You can also define like this. See, in, in all colligative property, relative lowering of vapor pressure, right, elevation of boiling point, that is delta Tb, depression in freezing point, delta Tf, and osmotic pressure pi. In all these, okay, colligative property. Let me write simply Cp. Colligative property is inversely proportional to molar mass of solute. If you want, you just go through. In all the colligative property studies, okay, we we have shown we have shown uh, a relation between colligative property and molecular mass. In all the case, see molecular mass of solute is inversely proportional to colligative property. Okay, just for uh, uh, information sake, I will show you which we discussed just for before. Under colligative property, under osmotic pressure, I have told right. Osmotic pressure, see, M2 is in the denominator. Osmotic pressure is a colligative property. Molecular mass of solute is inversely proportional. Okay. Not only this, in all colligative property, colligative property and molecular mass are inversely proportional. Therefore, I can also write this Vanta factor as, therefore, I can also write the Vanta factor I equal to, okay. Observed molar mass, right? Observed molar mass, molar mass of solute, it is inversely proportional. I'll, I'll write molar mass in the denominator. And theoretical molar mass, it will go to the uh, numerator. Theoretical molar mass. Theoretical. Theoretical. Is it clear, student? You can define colligative property like this also. Observed colligative property by theoretical colligative property or theoretical molar mass by observed molar mass. That will give you a uh, random factor. I. Okay. Then, random factor I equal to 1 if solute is a non electrolyte. If solute, solute is non electrolyte. Non electrolyte means it does not undergo any association or dissociation. If it does not undergo any association or dissociation, then theoretical colligative property, observed colligative property are one and the same. If these two are same, I will get I equal to 1. Right? I equal to 1. But if you take, uh, uh, if your solute is electrolyte, then it may undergo dissociation or association depending upon your solution. So, I is equal to, I, I, sorry, I may be greater than 1, I is greater than 1 if solute is electrolyte, solute is electrolyte and undergo, and undergo, undergo dissociation. If there is dissociation of electrolyte, then I should be greater than 1. Because if electrolyte dissociates, you will get more solute particle. You will get more solute particle. If you have more solute particle, colligative property will be higher. So, observed colligative property will be more 
than the expected colligative property. Okay, then I is less than one if solute is electrolyte and undergoes association. And undergoes association. Okay. Now, what I am going to do? Uh, I will take. Uh, so, for non-electrolyte, it is very simple. I equal to one. I will take electrolyte and I will just uh, uh, give some more information on this. We can calculate degree of dissociation, degree of association, right? Just uh, using that. Okay. So, let me take. Uh, electrolyte. Suppose the solute, solute if it is an electrolyte. If your solute is electrolyte, then what we have to do? We have to see whether electrolyte undergo dissociation or association. Okay. So suppose if the electrolyte undergo dissociation. Suppose if the electrolyte undergo dissociation, then what we have to do here? Here we have two part actually. We have two part. Number one. Number one. Suppose if the electrolyte is strong electrolyte. Students observe carefully. Suppose if the electrolyte is strong electrolyte. Strong electrolyte means it will undergo complete ionization. Therefore, in this case, degree of dissociation is one. Students observe carefully. I have taken electrolyte and assume that the electrolyte undergo dissociation in solution. If it is a strong electrolyte, then degree of dissociation should be 1. If alpha is 1, remember in this case, I value that is Vanta factor value is equal to number of ions produced from one mole. Okay, value n is number of ions produced produced from one molecule how many ions we get from one molecule molecule right c e e l e molecule From one molecule, number of ions produced from one molecule. Right? If it is a weak electrolyte, students observe carefully. If it is a weak electrolyte, what we should do? I'll just uh, uh, finish this and then stop. Okay, number two. If it is a weak electrolyte, what we should do? Weak electrolyte but undergo dissociation. Suppose assume that I have an electrolyte A. I have an electrolyte A. Okay. If I add the electrolyte A in uh, uh, in solution, it will dissociate. Okay. And produce uh, N uh, particles of B. Okay. A single molecule dissociate produce many, many uh, simple units or ions. Okay, n ions, n ions are produced. Just say right now. Okay, so initially, I'll, I'll take one mole, right? Say for example, initial number of moles, initial number of number of moles. Okay, A, B. Initially, suppose I'll take one mole of A. Uh, assume that there is no dissociation at the beginning. Right. Now, what will happen? From A. From A, at assume that some alpha mole dissociate. Okay, number of moles dissociated. Okay, number of moles dissociated. Say for example, from A, from one mole of A, assume that alpha mole dissociate. Students observe carefully. See, initially I have only A. One, I have taken one mole of A. Right. Uh, at the beginning, assume that there is no dissociation. Now, what will happen? Slowly, from one mole, uh, A molecules right dissociate. 
and produce ions and assume that at one stage okay or uh, uh, at the equilibrium at equilibrium say for example alpha mole dissociate then number of moles remaining number of moles remaining at the equilibrium is 1 minus alpha here so let's see if one molecule dissociate i'll get n n molecules of b or n ions if alpha mole dissociate if alpha mole dissociate i'll get n alpha moles of b is it clear student is this clear if one mole if if all the one mole dissociate i'll get n mole of b but from one mole only alpha mole is dissociated so i'll get n alpha moles of b okay n alpha moles now what is the total number of moles yes total number of moles equal to total number of moles equal to 1 minus alpha plus n alpha total number of moles equal to 1 minus alpha plus n alpha okay uh, what is colligative property i or what is vanta factor i'm sorry what is vanta factor vanta factor is observed by theoretical okay theoretically we have added one more so we expect colligative property for one more this is the theoretical but observed is the actual number of mole now become see total number of moles at the equilibrium now become one minus alpha plus n alpha so the actual colligative property is observed for this many moles Student, see what is the Vanta factor? Observed colligative property by theoretical. Okay, we have taken one mole. If this one mole remains as such in solution, then we expect colligative property for one mole. But since it dissociated, since the electrolyte dissociated, the total number of moles at the equilibrium is different. Therefore, the observed colligative property depends on this many moles. So, 1 minus alpha plus n alpha. Okay, or I can write this as I is equal to 1 minus, I'll take a, a okay, uh, I'll just write and then I'll react. Okay, you'll get an expression like this. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, I'll take, a, I'll bring this one this side, I minus 1 equal to, I'll take alpha as common, alpha is n minus 1. Or alpha is equal to I minus 1 by N minus 1. I minus 1 by N minus 1. This is the expression for alpha. Students, where alpha is called degree of dissociation. What is alpha here? This alpha is called degree of dissociation. Degree of dissociation. Students, observe carefully. Where alpha is called degree of dissociation. So, what is degree of dissociation? How it is related to Vanta factor? Alpha is equal to I minus 1 by N minus 1. Okay, let me write here. So, this is the formula for alpha. Degree of dissociation alpha equal to I minus 1 by N minus 1. I is Vanta factor and N is number of ions produced from one molecule. If one molecule dissociates, how many ions produced? That is nothing but I. Is this clear, student? Students, is this clear? Any doubt? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. I stop here. We'll continue the association uh, in the next class, and in the next class, we'll do uh, some problems. Okay, we'll do some numerical problems. Right. Thank if you. If you have any doubt, you can ask. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you.